In this video, I would like to demonstrate the whole frequency measurement range of the tiny GTC. To make that possible in a consistent way, I have here a GPSDO that acts as the frequency references for all devices. And here we have a distribution amplifier sending the 10 MHz reference to all the output and input devices. To generate the uh, needed frequencies, we have here a arbitrary waveform generator, the uh, Siglent uh, spectrum analyzer, for which I'm using the tracking generator to generate a wide frequency range, and for the highest frequencies, we have here an old HP signal generator that can go up all the way to above 18 gigahertz. As measurement devices, I'll be using a 12 gigahertz version of the tiny GTC and a Pico test frequency counter with 12 digits per second resolution uh, as a comparison. We start the measurements with 0.1 hertz or 100 millihertz. The signal generator generates a 1% uh, duty cycle pulse, uh, 3 volt peak to peak. And both the tiny GTC and the Pico test counter have been set to a trigger level of 1.5 volt. Um, you can see that the frequency has drifted over a period of about 1000 seconds, but the drift is rather small, it's 4.2 nanohertz, so this could be a warming up effect of either the signal generator or uh, one of the, the measurement devices and we shall look into the consistency between the frequency measurement of the um, tiny GTC and the Pico test to understand which of the devices could be causing this uh, drift. For the next measurement I have set the signal generator to 50 Hz and you can immediately see that at low frequencies the signal generator deviates because it's not outputting exactly 50 Hz. Uh, but the measure deviation is roughly the same for both counters. You can also see that the frequency is not stable. And the reason for that could be that I have some ground loop somewhere, and 50 Hz is a very difficult frequency because that interferes with the main frequency and with the ground loops. Uh, you could have second order harmonics and all kinds of other problems caused by the mains interfering in the measurement. But at least you can see that there, there are a large number of digits consistent uh, between the two devices. The next frequency to look at is 1 MHz. I've changed the signal generator to output a sine wave, which is more characteristic for this frequency. And um, both counters now show the 1 MHz. Keep in mind the tiny GTC displays one additional digit, which doesn't mean it has one digit more accuracy, but when you compare the readings, you have to think about that one extra digit. Uh, the frequency variation that's tracked in the uh, chart underneath the measurements is peak-to-peak uh, -peak 66, 66 microhertz, and that is microhertz uh, compared to the actual measured frequency of 1 megahertz. This next frequency, I'm not using the always used 10 megahertz, but a slightly more interesting frequency, 12.3456789012 megahertz. And as you can see, both counters nicely resolve this frequency. In the tiny GTC, I've changed the graph display to histogram, and the total width of the histogram is uh, about 700 microhertz, and you can see the distribution over the frequencies as they are coming in in the measurement. With 350 megahertz as input, we've reached the maximum input frequency for the uh, range without the gigahertz prescaler. Again here, nice consistency between the measurements of the two frequency counters. Also, the Pico test has reached its maximum frequency with 350 megahertz. So now we will be switching on the gigahertz prescaler in the tiny GTC and switch to the th uh, three, channel 3 of the Pico test. 
with channel 3 enabled for the Pico test and the Gigahertz prescaler enabled in the Tiny GTC, both can easily measure the 1 GHz coming from the spe Spectrum Analyzer tracking generator. Again, great consistency in the measurements and no problem at all. We're using here minus 23 dBm as input to both counters. Uh, the tiny GCC power level meter is at the maximum of its range and it shows minus 25 dBm, just a bit low. And that's to be expected because the power level calibration is not very good at this high range of its uh, meter. The next frequency is 3 GHz. As this is above the maximum frequency of the tracking generator of the signal spectrum analyzer, I switched to the older HP signal generator and uh, the output level is at minus 10 dBm. And you can see the nice matching frequency measurement of both counters. Uh, the HP uh, perfectly locks to the external reference and its output frequency is just as requested. No deviation here as seen with the spectrum analyzer. With the signal generator set to minus 10 dBm output power, I'm now going to increase the, its output frequency in steps of 1 GHz and we can see when the um, one of the counters is not able to measure the frequency. Let's go to 4 no problem for both counters. Let's go to 5. No problem. Let's go to 6. No problem. I have to switch the tiny GTC to its other prescaler. So, and now we're going to continue. 7 gigahertz. Yeah, that's all good. 8 gigahertz. Now we've lost the Pico test. Its maximum input frequency is indeed 7 giga rated at 7 gigahertz. So that's okay. And we have the tiny GTC still measuring the frequency. So let's go on and see where it stops. 10 gigahertz, no problem. It's rated maximum frequency 12 gigahertz, still no problem. All input frequencies above 12 gigahertz are more than the spec formally approves, but let's see what is still possible. We go to 14 gigahertz. Small deviation, but this could be... Oh no, this is in the signal generator. Let me reset it here to exactly output. Oh, it can't. It's uh, the counter in the, the frequency resolution of the signal generator doesn't allow you to set exactly 14 gigahertz. So the tiny GTC is measuring correctly the output frequency. Let's go on. Let's go to 15 gigahertz. Yeah, looks good. 16 gigahertz. Here again, the uh, signal generator isn't I is not able to output 16 gigahertz. There's a small deviation, but what you see on the tiny GTC is correct. And we go to. 17 gigahertz. The same deviation. So everything is perfect. The tiny GCC correctly measures the output frequency. We go to 18 gigahertz. Yeah. As you can see, the uh, level meter does not function anymore. Uh, above 1 gigahertz, the, its sensitivity drops off and uh, it's, it's impossible to calibrate uh, away that difference. So it's specced up to 1 gigahertz and don't expect anything from the level meter above 1 gigahertz. So now let's get in steps of 100 megahertz higher and see where we lose the 
tiny GTC. That's still okay. The deviation is correct. 0.2, 18.2 gigahertz. Yep, all good. 18.3, all good. 18.4, yeah, perfect measurement. 18.5, and now we see that the measured frequency is not correct anymore. And let me see if I can increase the input level a bit to get this stable again. Yeah, it's stable. I'm now at about minus 3 dBm input. Let's get a bit higher. Oh, I can't get higher. This is the maximum the signal generator can do. So we've covered now the entire frequency range of the tiny GTC from 0.1 Hz input to 18.5 gigahertz. I hope you found the find this uh, video uh, interesting and uh, I think it uh, gives a clear evidence that within its entire frequency range the tiny G is able to do correct measurements.